There's a bunch of videos already out there. I figured I would go ahead and make one more. Some of them are just too quick. They don't quite give you enough information and this should hopefully fill in some of the blanks missing on the other videos. This is not the right way to do this. By me rep repositioning this, I don't think it's going to actually do anything. It's not going to be able to pick up the sound from the engine that it needs. All my research shows it's basically tuned to pick up a certain frequency, but also at a certain level. By moving it from the valley and moving out to the side and having to put an extension on it, like you've seen others do, it is much further from the combustion chamber. Therefore, it's not going to be able to pick up the knocking. I'm only doing this because eventually I will be pulling my intake off and I can just then move it and put it in its proper place. Very little information out there about this, except for one thing that I found that's consistent. You will need to tell the computer to be able to pick up on a quieter knock because it's further away from where they intended it to listen. I could be wrong, but that's just what I've researched. Long story short, repositioning your knock sensor is not a fix. The right fix is to pull the intake off and put it inside. Or if you reposition it, you actually take your vehicle and get it tuned and have somebody's professional tune it so that the computer knows that it needs to listen a little harder because the knock sensor has been moved. With that being said, my number one sensor is fine. It's working. There's no issues. I'm not going to disconnect it and move it out. I'm going to just move sensor number two. Let's talk about some of the bolt information here. The LQ4, which is in my truck, is a Gen 3 engine. 10 by 1.5 coarse thread metric. That is the specs for the thread on the sensor. So, I bought me a coupler. I got that from the hardware store. They had one. And it's a three centimeter long. And I just screwed the sensor right into the coupler. I had to order online from McCormick.com MC a threaded rod. Again, 10 by 1.5 horse thread. This is 40 millimeters long. This is the size you would need and it's going to be a little long by maybe a couple millimeters but this is the closest I could get. At the hardware store the shortest they had was this long and I tried cutting it with my grinder which I don't have the proper tools and so I ripped my finger open but it doesn't matter I boogered up all the threads and just it just I just looked online and just decided to order one. So 38 millimeters is actually the length that I would need with this coupler to have the right length going into the engine block but this is going to be pretty close. The other thing you want to do is get some Loctite. This is by Permatex. This is actually thread sealant. You'll notice it's white. It is a locking sealant but you can break it loose with normal tools. It is a high temperature thread locking sealant from this company. If you go with their other high temperature it's in the red, you will have to do a lot of work to get that out. This actually works really well because I actually put this hand tight <laughs> using this and it it's not it's not coming out with my hands. So this will be fine if they make it in the blue high temp and you can find it. That's the real thread lock where you can break it loose with normal tools and they have it in the red bottle. You have to use special tools and heat to break it loose. Again, if it's a bolt you ever want to take out, you want to use the ones in the blue bottle. But I couldn't find high temp in the blue bottle. So, again, that's why I went with the sealant. And this last part I got here is just a simple connector. Standard ignition, I got it at O'Reilly. Also, this is just a standard ignition sensor. I got it at O'Reilly. It was like 70 bucks for the sensor. It was like 16 bucks for this. Six dollars for this and like four bucks for the coupler. I'm going to put some of the sealant on here and so then of course that can go onto here and then I will splice this into the original sensor wire on the truck. So as you see it's got a little tiny gap between the coupler and the block 
but it's pretty close. You'll also notice where I put this. It is between the back two cylinders. I've noticed several people replace both their knock sensors, even if there's only one bad, and then they put them on like the front of the block on each side, on the front. The point is to have it between the front two cylinders and the back two cylinders. That's why there's two knock sensors, not two knock sensors at the front of the block. So again, I question whether this is actually going to be useful to the computer in the truck at all, but if it is, you're closer to the right spot by putting it between the back two cylinders. You know, when you're looking at the side of the engine in the valley, they're between cylinders one and three and between cylinders five and seven. They're not between cylinders one and three on both sides. That's not how they are on this truck. Yeah, so if you're replacing sensor two, don't put it at the front of your block. It doesn't make sense to me why anybody would think that that is a good idea when it's even further from where it needs to be. Again, I'm really not sure how effective the knock sensor is even going to be. I just want to get rid of the light and make sure the truck runs for now. Eventually, I will do it right. This is a Band-Aid. All right, now let's get to the wire harness for this. This is a eight millimeter. The plug in here for the knock sensor is right here. This goes to the ECU, the one towards the front. This, if you follow it, will wrap around. You can feel it goes underneath the intake manifold. So this can come off. I pulled the tape back all the way and the blue wire, for my truck at least, the blue wire is for knock sensor two. So I cut the blue wire back off, left the green connected because that's going to go to knock sensor one, and I'm going to splice in a longer wire to this. Ideally, you should probably solder this, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I don't have the tools handy at the moment, so I'm going to just do a crimp. That'll work. And then to keep the wire away from heat, I'm going to run it up like this, probably tie a wrap it here, and then go straight down to the sensor so that it's not gonna be laying across anything right here. Yeah, I don't know what I did with my heat shrink and all of that, so I just did that for now, and when I find my heat shrink and stuff, I will solder it and do it appropriately. But that should be okay for now, and I just tied it up out of the way. Nice clear shot, misses everything there. And over to there. Now let's start it up and see how it does. I already cleared my codes. I don't want to make too much noise in my neighborhood trying to be respectful of everybody. This truck is kind of loud. So I will go down the street here in a little bit. Sensor is fine. It's working. There's no issues. I'm not going to disconnect it and move it out. I'm going to just move sensor number two. Let's talk about some of the bolt information here. The LQ4, which is...